Pretty much uh, the very, very beginning of the movie, there's four mathematicians in a room and they have a proof for N equals NP. And they're discussing the addition of an addendum to the proof that basically uh, was the practical application. So they were discussing why or why not this should be added. And then uh, later in the movie, their sponsor arrives, so the person, the per the person that's been funding their research. And then they start discussing why they shouldn't give it to them or why they should give it to them because it has a lot of ramifications if they do. And just a little background on P versus NP. P versus NP is the greatest unsolved problem in computer science and it is a millennium problem. One of those you get a million dollars to be solved, so easy, quick buck. And uh, the review, that's the scene for the entire movie, all an hour and 20 minutes. And uh, it's a thriller drama, which, despite it being one scene, it still was all right. It was a pretty good movie. I gave it three and a half stars. Overall, it's exciting and fun to watch. And uh, it was kind of a poorly explained ending, a little bit of mystery in there. And uh, there were some confusing asides, just some cutscenes that they jumped to, either in the future or the past, that didn't really explain it. But after I read online what it actually meant, it made a little more sense. But for a normal watcher, it would not make sense at all. So P versus NP, There's, this is complexity theory, and uh, P, the P class is all kinds of problems that are easy to solve and easy to verify. So an example I put there is just sorting some books. It's easy to sort things alphabetically. And then the NP class is problems that are not easy to solve but are really easy to verify, like jigsaw puzzles. It's easy to see when you have it all done, but it's not necessarily easy to do. This is all computer science, so easy for a computer, not necessarily a person. And uh, yeah, we'll go to the next one. So the P class stands for polynomial time. So basically, the equation for how many steps it takes to complete the problem with respect to the size is a polynomial function. It's not exponential. That's important, and some more examples are arithmetic, sorting, uh, finding primes, which is kind of interesting because finding primes used to be a more difficult problem. It used to be an NP problem, which I'll explain later too, but it recently became a P problem. And this equation is all determinant upon the algorithm you use. There's different ways to sort and different ways to do things. So I could sort things by moving them around in the same series, or I could pull them out and put them in order. There's a lot of different ways you can sort things. If you do it a different way, it'll give you a different equation that'll be faster or slower. And the NP class is non-deterministic polynomial time. So basically, instead of a polynomial, it's an exponential. And that just means it rapidly increases in time as the size expands. So some examples are vehicle routing, job scheduling, encryption, efficient markets, Sudoku, and voucher. And these are the hardest problems right now for computers to solve because as they get bigger, they rapidly become impossible to solve. Even just simple problems <coughs> like Sudoku for computers. It's really easy for a small board, but once you get bigger, it becomes impossible. And they're classified as brute force problems because you just gotta pour a ton of effort and time into it to solve it. So the biggest question with this, uh, with P versus NP is does being able to quickly recognize and an a correct answer mean it's easy to solve? And that's kind of the biggest question that they're asking with this millennium problem. And it can't be proved one way or the other quite yet. And then uh, next. So some modern examples. Uh, Kruger actually showed me this yesterday. There's a new way to multiply, a new algorithm for multiplication, for computers anyway. The old way was n squared time. So if you had, and n is the number of digits, so if it's a two-digit number and a two-digit number, that's say n equals two, and it would be four steps to solve. And the new multiplication is also four steps, but let's say we go with five. Five-digit number versus five-digit number. The old way, 25 steps. New way is 10 steps, so it quickly becomes a lot, lot faster. Which is why we can do this. Um, the primes used to be an NP problem, and that was a really difficult problem for them to solve. But now they have an algorithm that makes it easy to solve. So that NP problem is now a P problem because it's easy to solve and it's faster to solve. So you can pull that in. So 
So that's kind of the biggest thing about P versus NP, is can we do that with every single problem in NP? And can we do that so everything becomes easy? And another big thing about P versus NP, if you solve the hardest problem in NP and make it an easy problem, the whole system collapses and everything becomes P. Everything's easy, because everything's a version of that hard problem. Here's just an example. The reason P versus NP is hard to prove one way or the other is because it is an NP problem. It's hard to solve, but it's difficult to verify. And this is just kind of an example of what the graphs do look like everywhere. So on the left there is P does not equal NP, and uh, that's just P inside of NP, so it's not, that border would be a solid circle. And then this one, it's all encompassing, and it's just together. So what would happen if P equaled NP and all these hard problems became easy? Well, to start, all cryptography would be outdated. None of it would work anymore because computers could crack it really, really quickly, which is the biggest downfall of P equals NP. And then efficient markets and economy problems would be a lot easier to solve because those are all NP problems, and we could have a much stronger economy and a much more stable economy. Artificial intelligence would be a lot stronger and a lot smarter, and it would just get smarter and smarter because Artificial intelligence is based on all these kinds of problems that it needs to solve. And then all problems in the NP would be easy for computers. Basically everything in that would be easy. And then uh, I don't think I have any more slides. But there's also uh, outside NP, there's different complexity of problems, which is complexity theory. So another step outside NP is expert time. And a problem like that is not easy to solve and not easy to verify. So a question would be, if you had a random chess board, What's the best move? You can't easily verify and you can't solve it. And it's, even though we have computers that are good at chess, it's, it's still not perfect. And I don't think it will ever be. Yeah, I think that's all I have. Any questions?